Here's the truth that we live every day. We work harder. We work longer hours. We create more, more goods, more services, more of everything, and yet most of us earn less, less than we earned five years ago, less than we earned 15 years ago, and barely more than we earned 35 years ago. And our biggest employers, Walmart and McDonald's, well, their whole business model is about keeping the people who work for them poor. And Wall Street cheers them on. You see, it's time, my friends, to turn America right side up. And to turn America right side up, we need a real working class movement. And if that's going to happen, we, our institutions, have to do some things differently. We must begin here and now today the great work of reawakening a movement of working people, all working people, not just the people in this hall, not just the people that we represent today, but everybody who works in this country. Hi, I'm Laura Flanders, and with me is Karen Nussbaum. Karen is the executive director of Working America. For our audience that may still not know, what is Working America and how is it different but close to a union? Working America is the community affiliate of the AFL-CIO and we organize differently. We go into neighborhoods all around the country where working people live, but talk to the folks who don't have a union on the job. And what happened at the AFL-CIO convention this year that was so significant where all of this is concerned? The biggest news coming out of the convention was a, a resolution that we call anyone can join and everyone should. This notion that yes we need to protect and expand collective bargaining because that's where workers actually get to confront their boss and talk about higher pay. But we need to have many more strategies for raising pay for making sure that there's retirement or health care or sick days and that we only do by being agnostic about what form it's going to take you know uh, we need to take off our organizational spanks you know just see what form our movement needs to take and we only do that by inviting people in and letting them decide, okay, here's what we need and here's going to be our, the best way for us to exercise power. The reason this is so different is because, at least in this country for many decades, union organizing has been in the workplace yeah. of the workers that are covered by the same collective bargaining agreement as you are, workplace by workplace. Nothing to do with community and folks at home. Well, this was a big departure, that's true. and. Certainly in days past, in the 30s when the CIO was first organizing, it was grand coalitions, but in the last couple of generations, unions were about workplaces, and that's certainly where most workers get the most strength, but we needed to come up with new ways to build our strength, find ways to fight these battles with more folks coming together. And it's been enormously successful. We've got more than three million members, Laura, just in 10 years. When we go out every night and talk to folks on their doorsteps, two out of three people say, yeah, I want to join. So here we are, 2013. I hate to sound so cliched, but it is the sort of best of times and worst of times. Yeah. Um, let's start with the worst of times. 11% union membership, down over 10 points from even just 20 years ago. 6% uh, among private, private employees, private sector employees. And unions get a bad rap on every channel of TV, pretty much. Uh, most people have no idea yeah. what a collective bargaining agreement is. What makes you think this situation is, is salvageable, and what are you doing about I'll it? I'll tell you why. It's because Working America organizers are out having thousands of conversations every single night. And so we're out there talking to people who I'm sorry to say, are watching Fox TV. Yeah. But when you have a face-to-face -face conversation, people are <laughs> riveted. They know that what they're hearing on conservative television or radio actually doesn't make sense. They're looking for those alternatives. 
We need to break out of the old ways of organizing. The more we let the National Labor Relations Act decide who can be a union member, the more we're likely to fail. Work in America says, you know what? You want to join? Go ahead. Sign up right here. And that's working. So not to be negative here, but okay. um, the union has become pretty clear over all of its years about how much it costs to organize yeah. a worker. Uh, and that resource pool is directly related to how many dues-paying yeah. members they have. Will your new non-union Working America members be dues payers at the same level in, in a way that will keep these coffers stacked enough well, for you to do your work? You know, I, I do believe that workers need to pay for our own organizations if we're going to be independent. Uh, and Working America got the support of the dues of other members right. from unions, and that's what's allowed us to grow. And now Working America members are increasingly paying for our organization. And that's a challenge. We, these are not easy questions to answer. And actually, they're being asked all over the world by organizers and labor federations and working people because they face a lot of the same problems. You know, the corporations are global, and they don't, aren't constrained by national laws. And you work for a contractor, or you know, the labor laws don't affect you. The, those are all really serious problems. We need the new strategies that make us relevant enough for people that they're willing to invest their time and their money. Uh, you're, you're still dependent right now on support from union members. Is there an idea when you think that might change? We, are, we, we need to be on that path over the next five years. And we're already making some changes. So when we go into neighborhoods every night, we're talking more and more about dues. Uh, as we begin to organize uh, around industry groups, whether, you know, different kinds of workers, working with the unions that normally represent them. We'll be talking about, okay, if we give you, you know, if we make available to you both a voice, but educational materials and maybe backup if you've got a job problem, you need to help support that. And so we'll be, we'll be uh, uh, building all of that in. And, and, but the whole aim, though, is to have self-supporting organizations that expand on their own or else we'll never get there. Talk a bit about some of the campaigns that you've been involved in. I think the last time we actually spoke was around the Wisconsin uprising yeah. several years ago now. Um, we've won a few, we've lost a few on the progressive side yeah. over the last few years. But talk about what you're seeing out there. In New Mexico, we uh, have huge membership there. You know, it's not a very big state and got 125,000 working American members. and. So we took on minimum wage, and we passed a minimum wage initiative on the ballot, two to one, in Albuquerque. And the city council, even though it's the will of the people, said, well, we're not really going to implement it. And so now we're running a campaign to implement it, and we're talking, we're going into low-wage workplaces all over city, the city, and those workers are getting others to sign up and uh, sign petitions, and we're showing up at hearings, and. We're going to make sure that minimum wage is made available. And now there's a statewide campaign. In Minnesota, we've got a campaign with all kinds of part-time workers to uh, pass legislation on scheduling and at the same time put pressure on employers around work hours. Uh, we're working on immigration among working class white folks in North Carolina, and they are leading an effort in their part of the state to hold their po political uh, leaders accountable on comprehensive immigration reform. Uh, we're doing a, a campaign on job outsourcing in Wilkinsburg, Pennsylvania, that's totally run by Working America members and their friends <laughs> to pass an outsourcing bill. So it's covering a wide range, it's locally based, it's about real life issues, and in some cases it's really taken on the hardest questions. How do you answer the folks who say, I'm worried about mission drift by our union? Uh, we've got enough trouble in our, at the negotiating table. Um, do I really want to be spreading my investment, financial, but also my energy so widely on so many issues outside of the workplace? I really respect the challenges that unions are facing. And I think if we don't respect that, then we're out to lunch. 
But the beauty of Working America is that when all the unions come together, they can say, let's meet the needs of our members while we create a laboratory of, for change that all of us can help support and all of us can benefit from. And we can pick and choose, too. We don't all have to look alike. And I think that's what came out of the FLCIO convention, really a resounding endorsement of that approach. What's our mission in the media? How could we be covering this field better and this work? It's getting easier, I think, because there are so many workers who are stepping up. The phenomenal, heart-filling example of the Walmart workers, um, and how important that is to other people. The Dancers Alliance, who you know have made such enormous gains after organizing for decades. It's a big range of people who are making new ways to exercise power, and the more you cover that, the more people will see hope. You know, and if you don't have any hope, then you can't aspire for more, and if you can't aspire for more, then you won't organize. What's on your list for the next few months? Well, we've got a mission to be in 50 states over the next five years. We've got lots of interests. We're trying to expand as quickly as we can to begin to build out the new ways to, to do the work. And the challenges you're up against in terms of attacks from the right, um, how do you think you're doing going up against the folks of the American Legislative Exchange Council, ALEC, and the Koch brothers, and all the rest? Well, we're, we're beginning to win, aren't we? Working people themselves, I think, have a very, we hear it every night, people are more sophisticated about what's happening. They see that the economy is structured against them. The most successful con conversations we have are when people hear us explain how it is that the corporations are uh, benefiting at our expense, because that's what makes sense. And the more we can lift up those stories, the more people uh, don't suffer from cognitive dissonance. They get what's going on, and I think uh, that's what we do every night uh, at people's homes. It's what you do all the time on the air, and I think it's what the progressive movement does as we fight these battles. And finally, if people want more information, or if they want to fix their job, I hear you have an interesting uh, yeah. online uh, MD service. Right. Please come to fixmyjob.com if you've got a job problem. It's, uh, I like to think of it as a combination of a web MD for workers and rules for radicals, because <laughs> it'll also tell you how to organize. Uh, but also, just come to Wharton America. You can join. Anyone can join. <laughs> That's what we're saying. And we want to make sure that we build this movement, uh, open the doors as wide as possible. You don't have to just support the labor movement. You can join it by joining Working America. Karen Nussbaum, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you.